Okay gang, let's take a look at example two. We have directions that say to multiply or divide and to simplify each answer. So we have here the square root of negative 21 times the square root of negative 21. And the first thing I notice is I have an even index and a negative radicand. Even index, negative radicand. So what I need to do first is take the i's out. So this is gonna be i times the square root of 21 and then another i times the square root of 21. So when you're dealing with these complex or at least imaginary numbers, the first thing you have to do, if you have an even index and a negative radicand, take that i out. That's always job number one. And at this point, then I'm just gonna rearrange this using the, multiplicative, the fact that multiplication is commutative. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna write this as i times i times the square root of 21 times the square root of 21. All right, now i times i is i squared. The square root of 21 times the square root of 21 is really, I can write this out in that form if you want, or maybe some of you are seeing it already that the square root of 21 times the square root of 21 is just 21. So at this point I'm dealing with i squared times 21, and if you remember from the very front page, I'm gonna flash this back here, from the front page, yes, i was the square root of um, negative one, excuse me, but i squared itself was equal to negative one. So if you ever see an i squared, you can swap it out with the number negative one. And for this example, I do see an i squared, right? So this becomes negative one times positive 21. So my end answer is negative 21. Now you don't have to go through all of these steps to get here. If, if you can just see that it's happening right out the gate, that's fantastic. But I just wanted to work through all of the steps so that you could see my process. So let's try that over here, right? So for part B, I see even index, negative radicand, even index, negative radicand. I gotta take the, the i's out first. So I'm gonna have i times the square root of five and then i times the square root of 30. All right, so if I'm starting to work this, I can see I have i times i times the square root of five times the square root of 30. And I'm gonna start grouping these. So this is gonna be i squared and this is gonna be the square root of, I'll do five times 30 would be 150. Okay, fantastic. Let me do some work off to the side here. Let's see if we can break down 150. I know I can break, well, I know 150, we just did it into five and 30. 30 can break into five and six, and six can break into two and three. So as I start to break this down, right, I've got i squared times the square root of, it looks like I have a pair of fives, and then I have two times three. So again, the five can leave the radical. It comes out, or I should say the five squared will leave, but when it comes outside the radical, as multiplication, it's gonna come out as five. So I have five times i squared times the square root of two times three. So let's simplify this a bit. I know this is negative one, and I know this is six. So this becomes five times negative one. I've got negative five on the outside of the radical, and I have the square root of six still left in the radical, okay? All right, let's take a look at parts C and D. So where we multiplied up here, we're gonna divide for parts C and D. But it's the same situation. I need to get the i's out first. So this is gonna become i times the square root of 42 in ratio to i times the square root of three. And just looking at that, because this is all multiplication, my i's are gonna divide out. Okay, so then let's break this up. If I have the square root of 42 over the square root of three, I can write that under a one gigantic radical, right? Same index, so I can put the 42 and the three under the same radical. 42 divided by three is 14. All right, so I'll look at the square root of 14. Now 14 doesn't break, right? It's just seven and two, so nothing can escape the radical at that point. So I'm gonna leave my answer as the square root of 14. All right, for part D, again, I only see the one I up here, which is no biggie. So we got I times the square root of 63 over the square root of 21. And through properties of radicals, I can take this expression and put it under one radical. So I have i times the square root of 63 over 21. And 63 over 21 is the number three. So that's my answer, i square root three, okay? All right, so we're gonna move on to example three. And I, I wanna talk about taking a more complicated fraction and switching it over to standard form. I'll see you in a few, bye.